go in. That is the and it's abused. <laughs> I'm doing it. So I've got the, um, let's take a little. Now then crew, and welcome to my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Yet again, Tool Girl Sam is here to give me a hand. Thanks Sam. Really appreciate you being here actually, it makes it so much more fun because all I ever do is talk into a camera all on my own and it's, it's a bit weird actually isn't it? So at least I've got Sam here to interact with. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, when I can get a word out of you now and again. <laughs> okay, so this video is the last video, in fact hopefully it's the last video, no it will be the last video, covering um, differential um, assembly and adjustments and it's pretty complicated stuff and you need lots of patience and you need some special tools and you've seen in the previous videos we've used the DTR gauge uh, with a magnetic base we've used uh, a fish balance as well didn't we um, mm -hmm. to, to record the load for the preload the load being applied um, what else have we used that's probably about it actually but for this video you need uh, an engineer's marking compound now traditionally that is blue it's called engineers blue in England we call it and I was spent ages, and this was one of the delays um, why I didn't do these videos a while ago when we first stripped the diff down, is I wanted to find, I can't get into the tin. <laughs> Can you pass me a little flat screwdriver please, tool girl Sam? Have we got one over there? Is there a little flat one? Or a medium sized flat one? Flat one. Let's have a look. Oh, yes. Oh, here we are, look. It's on the bench. Right. Okay, so this is the stuff. I'm probably going to stab myself getting into it. It's usually the case. Well, there we go. Right. Okay, right. So, in fact, before I open it, too far. Oh, golly, it's been on its side, hasn't it? Right, that is the part number that you'll need, and you can get that off Amazon which is where I ended up getting it. I rang every single engineering company pretty much in Auckland uh, and Whangarei and where do you live? Up north isn't it somewhere? Yeah that place. I was actually in that place and there was an engineering company there and I went inside and uh, they just laughed at me. Andy why do you want yellow marking paint? And I said, well, I want yellow stuff because A, you can see what you're doing and I'm getting old and I can't see shit anymore. But secondly, it looks a lot better on camera. So that's the stuff. And you'll need a little, uh, little paintbrush to apply it with. And don't get it on your hands because it never, ever comes off. You'll just have yellow hands for life. So yeah, little paintbrush. That's for you, Sam. You'll need that. And uh, you better keep that level. There's your, there's your paint. And it cost three New Zealand dollars for the paint, and then it cost about twelve dollars to get it posted. It's fantastic, wasn't it? Super cheap, but you do need it for this job. But if you don't, if you can't find the yellow stuff, Engineer Blue will do fine. But just don't try and film it because you can't see shit. Okay, right. The diffs in the vice. Uh, we're going to paint up some of the teeth on the crown wheel, and then I'll show you how to take a reading, and then I'll tell you, talk to you, or tell you anything. I'll talk to you about how, what the tooth contact pattern means. As regards adjustment, yes, there's more adjustments. Here we go. Right, Sam. So you can choose probably five or six teeth, and you need to paint not the top. You need to paint. That's my little screwdriver. You need to paint this side of the tooth and this side. Mm -hmm. It's times six if you can, and you only need probably that amount of paint onto all of them. Yeah. So once you've got the paint where you want it, just spread it all the way across the tooth on both sides. So you're doing the drive side and the rear side of the tooth. The side that would be in contact on overrun. When you take your foot off the throttle. You're pretty good. You must have been an artist in a previous life, were you? Yeah. <laughs> you've got to try and get it as even as you can across the tooth as well. Because that'll, that'll come apparent shortly. The brush is a bit like stiff, so it leaves lines. But... Yeah. 
Just one I've done, peeking around. Watch it out. In fact, I stole the brush. It's one of Emma's uh -oh. brushes. So, as long as she doesn't watch the video, we'll be fine. But she'd left loads of paint in it, so I cleaned it all up. And no, you can't use tissues to apply this, you need a brush. It doesn't work with the tissue paper. As my students found out. Looking pretty good. Oh yeah, you've got all the teeth teeth painted, haven't you there? That's excellent. Okay. Right, so the next step is we have to draw that part of the crown wheel into mesh with the pinion gear. Uh, and then turn the pinion forwards and backwards. But we have to also have the whole system under a little bit of load, which means we need to wedge a bit of wood or something against the crown wheel while we turn the pinion to sort of force the teeth together to show us where they're touching. It gives a better pattern. Okay, Sam, so with your special tool out for now, just out, out, that's it. I'll turn that by hand because there's no load yet. I'll only put the load on once you've got the paint mm -hmm. into mesh with the pinion. So you turn your crown wheel, that's it, turn, turn your pinion, sorry, and watch that go down so that your paint's about in the middle of the pinion, so that as many teeth are in contact as possible. Yeah. yeah? Cool. Okay, so I'm going to apply a load using a bit of wood, just pushing mm -hmm. against the crown wheel, and you can put your tool on there if you want. And then you can just do it forwards and backwards with your tool. That's it. That should be enough. Okay, so if you run it back out of mesh now, so you put your paint back up here again, and then we'll see what we've got. Ah. You see? Pretty nifty, isn't it? That's really cool. See if I can just move the camera around a bit so you can see a better, a better shot. Okay, so can you see here where it's taken the paint off the tooth? Yep. And it's left this sort of shadow area, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Where you can see the metal underneath. And that's where the tooth, or the teeth, on the pinion gear are actually making contact with the tooth on the crown wheel. And it's not bad, actually. The, the, preferably, you want it to be central to the tooth. We're almost central, aren't we, really? Mm. We're certainly not down in the valley, and it's certainly not touching up on the peak, on the pitch, oh, sorry, on the peak. So we are central along the length of the tooth, but we are slightly biased towards the end of the tooth. You know, there's less of a gap here than there is down here, but I'm not unduly worried about that. Okay, let's take a look at the other side of the tooth. Right, Sam, if you just rotate it so that the, the, uh, the painted area goes a bit further up, then we can see the back side of the teeth. That's it, that'll do. Okay, so what have we got there? Jeez, it's quite a different kind of contact pattern, isn't it? So we've got contact, by the looks of it, down this area of the tooth. So it's down near the base of the tooth, towards the center of the crown wheel, up to about there. Yeah, right, you can see here, look, it's taken all the paint off again, around there, mm -hmm. and down there, and down there. So, is that on overrun or is that on drive? Because if it's on it's the drive side, it's the critical side. The overrun side is not as, not as important. Okay, let's work it out. On the on the vehicle, the prop shaft spins in this direction here. So if we put a an arrow on there, like that that's the direction of rotation when the vehicle is going forwards. So you can see down here that the drive side is this side here as a tooth. This tooth on the pinion touches that one, it pulls it down, doesn't it? So it's actually pushing against this side here, which is this, this back side, the side towards the camera. So this side is the drive side, and this other side here is the overrun side. So on overrun, we've got fantastic tooth contact, but on the drive side, we haven't. We need to make some adjustments. Now, I'm not going to make the adjustments on this video, because, to be perfectly honest, it means taking the whole diff apart again. Yeah, and basically you change the, um, there's a second shim that sits between the pinion gear itself and the inner bearing in a race. Sorry, Sam, I'm having a good yawn there. 
I almost caught that on camera, but not quite. You're all right. I try to step off for that one. It's <laughs> <laughs> It's all right. Okay, so yeah, you've got to basically take the whole dip apart again, pull out the, uh, the pinion shaft, remove the inner bearing, which involves a press, off the pinion shaft, and change the shim thickness between the, between the inner bearing and the, uh, the pinion gear. And that moves the pinion gear relative to the crown wheel, you know, in this sort of plane. And I'm not doing that. What I will do, though, is I'll put on the video uh, an information sheet about what about tooth contact pattern and what adjustments need to be made to get the pattern correct uh, and it'll have lots of different examples of poor tooth contact pattern right Sam so we're not going to make any more adjustments to this diff this is as far as I want to go with this one we still have a couple of things to do we've got to tighten these bolts up because they're still not fully tight because we were turning the wheels earlier on and we need to fit the locks which stop those wheels from moving around pretty important Okay, so let's do these first. And uh, the torque setting for these is 80 newton meters. Yeah, uh, but I think we need a bigger socket there. So if you want to wind it up to 80, and it's a 17 for that one, and we'll get those cranked up. What do you reckon? You about there? Uh, bloody good. Perfect. My effect's crap. <laughs> okay, so you can lock it off at the bottom again just by twiddling that. And that, that way it can't go out of adjustment. Okay, so if you lose the little, yeah, lose the little socket. That's a 14, Ow. that one. Yeah. Oh, we need that bit. That's our adapter. There you go, stick that back on again. Oh, I've, got you, I've got your socket, because we used it earlier on, I think, just for tweaking them up. So you might want to come around. If you come around this side, you should get a good angle on it. And you're going up so you might want to when you come to get it really tight and we have to do them evenly as well so you turn that one once and then turn this one once so you take that off again pop it down there that's it cool. yeah we've got we've got to go down evenly you're pretty close yeah okay so go to the next one there you go that's it right so now, because you want to do the clicks, you're going to have to have the torque wrench as low down as you can, so, you, so you're actually pulling up. You might be able to get, you might be able to get the torque. Uh, uh, oh, the diff. Come on. Oh, you're so strong. Uh. <laughs> Don't know if I can go any. All right, I'll give you a hand. I'll give you a hand. You ready? You ready? 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 Uh, Jesus. Oh man, that Good was tight. Nice. Okay. Should we go down a bit? Go down a bit. Yeah, try that. All right, ready? Uh, this moving. Uh, move my head out of the way. Cool. Okay. I think I'll turn the diff around in the vice for the next one. Jeez. There we go. Doing it the wrong yeah. way. Oh. Sorry, that way, not that way. The, the clickiness is just bringing it back to base. Yeah. There you go. All right. There we go. I was like wondering why it didn't feel right. It feels so much easier this time around. Yep. It's never easy. You might, you might get this one, maybe. If you've got enough pies. I'll give you a hand. It's just. Oh, man, that's tight. Right, you ready? Yep. Okay, team effort. Oh. Tell you what, just. Uh, come down a bit, there we are. Then I can get it from here. Right, you ready? Give us a push. Brilliant. Right, and again. Bloody good. I wonder if um, maybe we should check tooth contact pattern again. 
now that we've bolted everything down because it might have actually brought the crown wheel a bit more in. So we could do that, but we'll put these little clips on first. So one for you and the bolt. One for me. So they just basically, the little pin there, look, okay. just goes into the hole here. Yeah. Just a way of it locking so it can't come on. Oh, shit. Lots of fingers. Ugh, so it can't come undone. And did you know that a lot of diffs on American stuff, American, um, this is called a cartridge diff, whereas the American ones, all this bit and the, and the pinion, it's all built into the axle. And then it just has a cover plate over it. So you've got to do all this on the car. All these measurements. Wow. Shit. Stupid idea. So if you blow a diff, you've got a, you know, it's, it's a much bigger job, whereas with a cartridge diff, you can just pull out the half shafts like you did when we took it out of the axle. Half shafts out, ring of bolts, out it comes, get a new one. So these are so much better. I don't know why the Americans do it the way around. So somebody will tell me. Right. Okay. Done. Right. Let's check tooth contact once more, just to be on the safe side. Okay. Right, so we'll get a new bit of new bit of crown wheel. Then you got Sam, you know what to do. Chaos. It's better second time round because you know what you're aiming for, don't you? You know what you're gonna to expect to see. Yeah. I can imagine you sat by a river in the middle of summer or spring doing a water painting of the duck swimming across the water. <laughs> Not really. Yes, I was just wondering where you were going with that. <laughs> if I could draw. Then I, would. I can't draw to save my life, to be perfectly honest. I can do engineering drawings with rulers and stuff, but I oh, can't do... Same uh... time you've done four. Okay, four will work. We'll let you um, off because you've already painted really a few. Doesn't, come on. doesn't, it's good stuff. <laughs> Okay, so you want your super duper special tool for once you've got it into, into position. So you can twizzle it around. Get it into so that the paint's in the middle of the pinion. Yeah. Yep, cool. Okay, now just apply a bit of pressure on here. And you can just do it forwards and backwards a few times. That's it. There you go. Cool, that should be enough. Okay, Sam, whizzle it round so it comes back up here again. Oh my word, I'll do. Let's go back a bit. Okay, so still on the drive side, you see it's really low, dangerously yeah. low on the tooth now. It's right down this bottom corner. And the other side's more centered. Is it? Yeah. Alright, so flick it around a bit more. Oh yeah, look at that. More centered than before. It is. It really is bang on actually. So you can see now, compared to previously, how now the contact pattern on this side of the tooth is very much almost central. That's really, really good. Very happy with that. Especially that one there, look. They should all be about the same, to be perfectly honest. And this is an old diff. I have no idea of the history of it. Uh, the teeth are not particularly worn because they're pretty wide at the top here, look, still. Okay, well, like I said before, we're not going to make any adjustment... Oh, shit, sorry, camera. We're not going to make any adjustments to this, um, to this diff. But it was pretty cool to see the contact pattern changes. So you can see down there, look on the back just how bad the contact is we've got one basically they're all right on the tip of the back of the tooth and that's the drive side don't forget and what that would do if that diff went out of the shop like that in a vehicle is it's highly likely it would chip the edge of that tooth off cause a major problem and of course the diff would fail so it needs to be set up properly this diff is currently a fail like otherwise there's a weird gap like too weird yeah 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 you can't run it up you can take your clothes off now if you want. That helps with grip because I have sweaty hands. <laughs> yeah. 
Cool. Right. There you go, look, that's better. Right, I can see your midriff now. Cool. Okay, well. Nice. Very sweaty oh, gloves. Look those. at that. They smell terrible. I didn't even bother wearing gloves this time. My hands are filthy. Again. Okay, crew. Well, there you go. That was the last in the series of, well, I suppose five videos, really, because one was the strip down out of the axle with the component ID, because we talked about all the parts, didn't we? All the names mm -hmm. of the parts and stuff. That was a while ago. And then recently, these four videos that we filmed today covering um, pinion preload, crown wheel carrier bearing preload, um, tooth, uh, so tooth backlash, and then finally tooth contact pattern. Uh, and I'll put on the end of this video quite a bit of uh, information about what each pattern means and what adjustment needs to be made to try and bring the pattern into the centre point of the tooth to rectify it to make the diff good to go basically. And just bear in mind, sometimes you can't. Sometimes it's down to um, you know warpage of the casing um, or something's got bent. So if it's a second hand diff, which obviously you'll be setting it up, then do bear in mind that you might go through the whole process of fitting brand new bearings, fitting the right size shims, doing all the preload, doing the backlash, only to find at the end the diff is scrap. Seriously, and that, that's the biggest problem and one of the reasons why many, many garages these days won't go anywhere near a diff because how are you going to tell your customer that you spent three hours rebuilding the diff and you spent $200 on bearings and, oh, by the way, that's now scrap. You still owe us for the bearings and the labour, but you need a new diff. Most garages will just go, hey, just buy a second-hand one that we know is okay. It came out of a car that was known good. What the hell was that? Or they'll, you know, buy a brand new diff from the uh, manufacturers, which is really expensive. Anyway, there you go. Hopefully, this is these this series of videos has given you an insight into the complexities of setting up a differential a differential unit or a diff head. I think the Americans call it diff heads. I don't know. I'm English. I'm Yorkshire. Okay, if you found it helpful, then hey Sam, you do this one. Come. Definitely your turn again. Alright, so if you found this helpful, then subscribe and click on the gear icon. Click on the gear icon so that you get notifications. Perfect. Don't forget to tick the box at the end as well. Okay, and you'll also find me on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, and Instagram. Excellent. You're getting the hang of this, aren't you? Fantastic. Okay, crew. Well, until next time, it's over and out from me. Cheers, Sam. Really Sweet appreciate yes. your help today. You've been absolutely fantastic. See you, crew.